Okay, let's talk about tire pressure monitoring system or the TPMS sensors on your Tesla or on my Tesla, since that's the one that I'm actually going to be talking about. There is a, a whole bunch of uh, frustration that comes from these sensors. If you, oh, she got tired. I, apparently I'm taking too long. If, uh, if you don't know the history of them, uh, very basically there was a Ford and Firestone had an issue with the Explorers uh, back in the mid nineties, I think it was. A lot of uh, tires were delaminating or basically falling apart on the road. The tread was coming off and the Explorers would be overloaded and not at the right tire pressure. And so they uh, would fail and roll over and there was a number of tragic accidents. And so the federal government mandated that we have tire pressure monitoring systems installed in every car, TPMS sensors and they are great when they're brand new. And then as they age, they become a bit of a handful. I want you to note how I got that T to line up perfectly just on dumb luck parking in the garage today. So the TPMS sensor is on the other side of the valve stem. It's inside the wheel. It is not serviceable. The battery is connected to the backside of that sensor or inside that sensor inside the wheel. So they're good for about five years. If you have a set of tires that you're gonna be replacing anytime around the five year mark, you're going to want to replace those sensors on the same trip to save you some headache on the mounting and balancing and on the sensor errors. Now, over the years, Tesla has used two systems for their tire pressure monitoring system. This car uses the first system called a bow long system. It's a very simple system. It was used for basically the first 50,000 Tesla Model S's that were built through mid-July in 2014. This car was built in May it does not give you the tire pressures at the individual wheels. If you have the Continental system, which is used on all new Teslas and on all Model S's after mid-2014, it will give you the individual tire pressures displayed on your driver display. Now that Continental upgraded system was a part of a much larger upgrade that happened to the Model S in mid-2014. They dismantled the original assembly line. This is one of the last cars to come off the original Fremont assembly line, the one you've seen in that documentary, no doubt done by, I think it was National Geographic. And they rebuilt the assembly line so that they could put new features in the cars. Those are all the autopilot capability and eventually the dual motors and all of the things that come with it. As part of that upgrade, they went to this Continental system. Now the Continental system is pretty clever. It actually will reset itself. It doesn't really, I mean, very rarely does it give an error. Does it have to be reset? When you change your wheels seasonally from summer to winter, it will automatically figure out that there's a new batch of sensors and you really don't have to do anything. Uh, in fact, I think they'll actually reset without driving the car. Whereas this bow long system is a little simpler. You have to manually reset it on the screen every time you change the wheels and you usually have to drive a few miles for it to register that, oh, we've got new sensors here. I happen to have three sets of wheels for this car. I have the original wheels, which came with it, which had my summer tires on them. I have this set of gray wheels from T Sport Line, which had my snow tires on them. They have different tires on them now. In fact, they've reversed their roles. And I have 21 inch referral arachnids from Tesla. The gray wheels here have sensors that I got off tire rack. There are generics, but they're pretty good generics. They were the only ones available at the time. They are still the original sensors and the battery's a little funky right now. When it's warm out, it will reset. When it gets cold, the battery's too weak and, and it triggers an error. So I alternate between working sensors and non-working sensors. The arachnids have Tesla sensors, which will give you a, a number of different readings. Not, not the PSI, but other readings, which I'll explain in a moment. And then I have some generic sensors that are pretty cheap. Now sometime around 2017 or 2018, when probably the Model S fleet was about half of the new sensors and half the old sensors, Tesla did a software update that eliminated the manual reset button for the bow long or the original sensors. And so people would swap their winter wheels. I, can't, I think we were putting winter wheels on at that time, snow tires on, and we didn't have any way of reprogramming the sensors to, to be read by the car. Now, people who are under warranty, some of them got free upgrades to the Continental system and they got new sensors. Some people did not, who were not in warranty. I was not in warranty at the time. And then there's a whole mixture of people who are out of warranty, but got comped the system, but had to buy the sensors and, and all sorts of the usual concrete, you know, hard line customer service policy that Tesla is known for. There's just, it was all over the place. 
the problem I had is I had, like I said, three sets of wheels. So for me, it was 12 sensors. It was a lot of sensors. And I knew that the system was working fine when I took the wheels off. And I knew that the other ones had worked fine when I had taken them off the season before. And I knew that that, it's beeping at me. I knew that that um, reset button disappeared in the software update. So I was a little obstinate and I held out and waited for them to correct the error. When they did, the system works fine again. And I suspect that many people paid to get upgraded out of their own pocket, those who didn't get the free ones, because that's what the service centers in some cases were telling them is that they had to change the system. The system was broken. Well, it actually wasn't broken. It just needed the software reset button put back in the interface. And that's what the button looks like when it's in the car. This is under the service menu, which you can find by hitting the little car button on the display. Right now, like I said, mine need to reset because it was cold last night and it won't be in the high 70s or 80s until tomorrow when these weak batteries and these uh, sent this set of sensors will be able to be reset successfully again. Now when the sensors do reset you'll get a confirmation screen here that says they've been properly reset. Interesting thing about these sensors though I want to explain that. So on the driver screen when the sensors aren't reading properly you'll get the flashing icon that appears up here and you'll get a text box at the bottom explaining what the sensor problem is or what the problem is with the TPMS, uh, TPMS sensor just like any other error that the car generates. But here's where it gets a little tricky. While the original Tesla sensors and you can still buy them from Tesla they're about $75 each. Those sensors will tell you that you have pressure that is too high, pressure that is too low, or they will tell you that there is a fault or error with the system. Those are the three messages that they can give. But if you don't want to buy the Tesla sensors, because a full set is about $300, you can buy generic sensors, which are cheaper. Now, like I said, I have tire rack sensors that was all that was available at the time. You couldn't even really get extra sensors from Tesla easily. So those are pretty good. They're, they really mimic the Tesla sensors very well. And I, I'm pretty sure that I get all the messages with those. But here's where it gets a little more complicated. If you buy the really inexpensive sensors, which are the ones that the tire shops tend to have and is which uh, I most recently bought, they are not that sophisticated. They really only generate one error. I'm not sure what the problem is. I don't know if it's with the software in the car, the way this, the um, software is interpreting the message from the sensors, or if the sensors just don't have the ability to give that granular information of too high, too low, or fault. But what happens is if you get the generic sensors or many of the generic sensors, they will work with the car and the system will work fine, except it will no longer give you that the pressure is too high or the pressure is too low. The sensors will reset successfully and they'll give you that display there. But if it faults or generates a fault uh, very quickly thereafter and you reset it and it generates a fault again, it is not a sensor problem. You need to check your tire pressure. The generic sensors, when they send the message that it's too high or it's too low, or for all I know, the only message they know is pressure good, pressure bad, the MCU is interpreting that as a fault. It's not going to give you the granular info you're used to from the Tesla sensors where it says pressure is too high or too low. It's just going to say something's wrong. And so, uh, if you check your tire pressure after that, you'll usually find that the pressure was actually off because of temperature changes or whatever. In fact, I would suggest that anytime you get a TPMS error, not a too high or too low, but an error, check your tire pressure. Make sure that the tire pressure is correct, then reset the sensors, and then see if the error comes back. So again, I know why these sensors aren't working. It's because the batteries are too old and I should have replaced them when I did the last set of tires. But what you can do is you hit reset. It's going to argue with me and it'll go into this resetting. Now, oftentimes the error won't come back the next time you drive the car until it's decided that it thinks you're an idiot, I guess. But you can tell if I go here, for example, that I've been getting, oh, my door's open. I've been getting, uh, I've been getting these periodically. So again, you can save quite a bit of money if you get generic sensors. You just have to understand the limitations of those sensors versus the ones that come from Tesla. 
I don't really think it's worth the extra 120 or 150 dollars or whatever it works out to to get the Tesla sensors. I don't really like these uh, tire pressure monitoring systems anyway because it seems a little superfluous. Although in a really heavy car like a Tesla, maybe maybe the argument can be made that it's more important than in my Subarus, for example. But I don't like to pay for the the big name sensors if I can just go to the tire shop. The tire shop has them right there and they're cheap and they'll service them for me a lot cheaper than Tesla will if there actually is a problem with the sensor. But what we, we have discovered is that the generic sensors do not give you the range of information that the Tesla sensors do. So again, this is only for those bow long sensors. If you get the individual PSI on your car, you have the continental sensors and I think you have to go to Tesla for those, but I'm not I've never tried to shop them because I don't have those sensors. But if you have any questions about the Baolong sensors, the original sensors, and happen to have a Model S that still has them, you can drop them in the comments section. I'll be happy to help you.